Hello! Probably part four. We're on part four. Um, so, now then, yes, we've been doing, there's the rose. Got, got a fingerprint on it, but we won't worry about that. Hey, that's because, as you can see, my hand's dirty and I haven't been cleaning them. Should probably put the rose somewhere out of the way, but I can't because I could just like to keep kind of looking at it and checking it. And these are the fabrics that we did earlier. So that was the one with um, just the alternate repeats in different colours. That was a straight repeat background, but using the textured stamp as well and with um, the positive image put in. And that was the one I just finished off um, when the camera went off. So continuing on from that point, I'm going to do some random ones, but I just did notice, I've got to be honest, um, this bad boy that I haven't printed yet, as you can see, because it's virgin. So this is a nice little leaf, which will go with our um, theme of roses and nature. So I'm quite happy to use this one. So let's let's see what this is like. The palette's gone a bit dry again while I've, been, while I've been uploading things. I think we could do with, oh, we can make some green. Um, I've, I could pour out some more green, but I've got blue. It's far too much blue. Yes, far too much blue. I've probably just moved blue up the other end there. That's made green in there. So I think, I think, I think what we'll do here, chaps, is we'll put some more yellow out. Why? Because I just put too much blue out. Don't worry about it. You can see I've still got loads of paint left in these. You only need <laughs> tiny bits at a time. You might be better with a teaspoon if you have a hand like mine that tends to chuck out large bits at a time. Right, let's put some good old, um, I've poured that yellow straight in the green. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't have to be like this, chaps. It really doesn't. It can be a lot more organized than this, honestly. There we are. There's a nice green look. There's a nice green. We'll go, should we go with that green? Let's go with that green. Let's go with that. Let's put a bit of white in with that green. Just lighten it up a bit. Okay, there's a nice green. Right, here we go. So, brand new stamp to try out. Always exciting. Haven't positioned it terribly well on here. I've got it hanging right off the end. But, let's quote me. Do I care about that? No, I don't. I've got it off the end on one side and not on the other. So that should be interesting when we get printing. That is nice. I like that. Right. Should we do? I like that checkerboard business. But the trouble is when you do the checkerboard, I then don't want to. Let's do a proper half drop. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll change our mind completely. What we'll do is we'll do. We'll do a straight run up here, but we'll keep reversing the stamp. That's another idea. I could go on, honestly, for hours with ideas of things that you could do with these things. I really could, because all you have to do is just stand there with it in your paw hand and think to yourself well what else could I do how could I make this bit more interesting I'm getting bored because if you're like me you get bored after about well one piece um and then well, what else could I do with it how else could I make it interesting you'll also find if you're like me that you do it all wrong half the time so you think you're doing alternates like that and then you find that you've actually printed one the wrong way around so that always adds variety too am I talking too fast shall I slow down let's try and slow down um you see, I can't think of anything to say when I slow down. I speak fast because it stops me, being, <laughs> stops me being nervous. Bit of a disadvantage if you can't actually understand me. But anyway, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you're getting a bit of the gist. Right, so we've done that line. Now let's, let's go halfway between the other ones now. So let's do a halfway line like this. So let's take that and do it like that. So this is a half drop. It's just I'm doing it on the sides. If I put it that way, it's a half drop. So... Let's do that and we'll also alternate the way I'm going to print it. I'm going to try and talk slowly and carefully and sensibly as if I wasn't a hyped up manic. Who said that? I did notice on her Chanda that Leonie and I had a good chat about, about the voices in our head. I think she was joking. Um, <laughs> not sure I was. I certainly have a few. Right. Um, not sure if that's the right way up. Yes, we're still getting there. We're still doing okay here. Can't remember where I made green, but anyway, we'll mix a bit more of that in there. My palette is now nice and messy, but I quite like that. It gives quite a lot of serendipity. And I like a bit of serendipity. You could, of course, do fabrics by just using this one negative stamp and printing back over it in layers. That would be quite acceptable too. And I'll tell you what we haven't done yet is print over one of the coloured ones. We should do that as well. More green in there, just tweaking it up, changing it round. I'm happy to keep altering my colours um, because it gets me different colours on the palette, and I like that anyway. So let's put a bit of um, let's get a bit of that in there 
and a bit of that in there and a bit of bit of water it's all getting a bit dry a bit of that in there as well i've made now i've completely changed the color of the green now so we'll put a bit of yellow in to get it back to a greeny green instead of a bluey green the more you muck around with these things enjoy yourself don't worry about it and just take your time and do things and let yourself play the more you will learn about how things mix how colors mix what you like what you don't like you can't really to be honest with you i don't believe anyway read it in a book and absorb it properly you will read it in a book and what will happen is as you're playing it will come back into your mind you'll think ah yes i read that i read that if i mix purple and yellow i'm going to get brown makes sense now because i've just done it otherwise you can read it till you're blue in the face and it doesn't mean much the prime example is um lots of students come on um particularly the make it personal course but other courses as well that have done their city and guilds now i know because i've done my city and guilds that we did color theory in city and guilds in as much as we drew color wheels and talked about it time and time and time again but it hasn't sunk in it hasn't really become um ingrained in them and i can tell them it again and that's fine but it still won't become ingrained in them what makes them learn it and understand it is doing it and that will always be true so now then that wants a bottom that wants a top oh when it's in the middle now come on you nearly let me do that wrong you nearly just let me go ahead and print that complete how could you how how could you when i'm relying on you to shout out right it's a bit sad in here because i'm not getting i did like the email bit on the tv i thought that was very exciting getting emails from my buddies um so for those of you that emailed in, that was very nice. Thank you. So that's, again, that could be a lovely piece of cloth like that. Shall I show you? No, because, well, because um, I could just go back over this and print again, um, maybe in white or maybe in a paler green. Um, let's do a bit like that. See what it looks like, shall we? Oh, and I've put some green colour and purple background. Don't worry about that. We'll go for, we won't really get white unless I clean this stamp off a little bit. I won't get anywhere near white. We still won't get white because I've got a dirty brush and still a dirty stamp. But we can give it a better chance by getting some of that off. Right, see if I can at least get pale. Just about. Hmm. Just about. Might need to wipe that again. Let's give that a go. So let's put that in. And this is where I will get mixed up now. But let's, let's position this. Now, I fancy, and it's really difficult. Let's go for there. Right in the middle of all the other ones. Down she blows. Now, that, that really doesn't show, does it? Okay. Um, so is there any point in carrying on with that? We ask ourselves. Let's do one more. It's because it's so light and I've got so much. If it was plain white, it would. Sort of. I don't know. It's quite nice. Can you see that? It's quite nice. Maybe I should come back to that. with the. the, the let's just. Oh, God, honestly, I can't decide, can I? What a muppet I'm being tonight. Right, let's just do a few of them. And then I'm thinking maybe we could put the positive in there. Maybe we just do one line down the middle. I don't know, because the more I'm getting the white onto the stamp and not so much of the other colours, the more this is coming up as a nice gentle pattern. And it's what it's doing is it's breaking up the back and stopping this being so obvious what the stamp is. Not that that matters, because it is our stamp and we're proud of it. But... I could have illustrated this better with a different colour. Why don't I do it in purple? Um, what way am I? I think I need one of those there. That first one was so faint, I can barely see it. Oh, hang on. We're getting more of my bosom, less of the thing. Sorry about that. Camera's moved. We do not want, as I mentioned so often, my bosom involved in things. We just need to keep that lad out. Right. Here we go. That's down that side. That's up that side. So... Now then, what do I do now? Can you see that? Does that show? It does show, doesn't it? Should I do? I quite like that, like that, though. Let's put, let's put some positive purples. Let's, let's go for positive purples. I'm just going to put that brush there and get, there is another whitish one. Where is it? There. Right. Okay. Purples have gone a little bit dry as well. But let's put some positive purples in the new ones I've just put that are barely showing. Does that make sense? So the ones I've just overprinted in a sort of pale green that aren't showing very well, I'm going to try and put the positives in those and that might just... Oh yeah. Oh yeah, like that. Can you see that? Can you see that? See that? You see that? 
That looks nice, doesn't it? So we've got a bit of kind of um, overworking here and now I'm getting these and I like that a lot. Right, let's do a line of those. That's a nice double stamp. I need, some, oh, I need to make a bit more purple. So some red, some blue. I always put too much blue in, a bit more red. That's nice. Some white, I've just turned the white purple. That's okay. We can live with that. Right, so if that's that, that way, then that one must be that way. That's a nice stamp, I like this, I like this. This is going to be a nice piece of fabric. What you have to remember with these fabrics is you are going to tear them up and collage them. So in actual fact, a lovely piece of fabric is not always a good thing because you won't want to tear them up and this could start falling into that category if I'm not careful. But I think what I will do is I will put these on. I would like to finish this and I will do for when we do the collage, which looking at it is going to be tomorrow because I need to do some packing. Um, but I might finish this off camera so that we can just look at doing some random ones. And then if we've got time at the end, I'll come back to that. Because what I would like to do with that, to be honest with you, is do the rest of it like that. Because I think that looks really nice with the leaves coming through from the background, the overstamp. But I need to, um, I feel I need to show you some random stuff first. So that I don't think would do. Yes, it would. That would have an edge on there. So again, I'm making time to just do those little tiny edge stamps. Right. Got a great big walloper on there. So let's start with that great big walloper on the green background. So we've got the green pre-printed, pre-printed, pre, pre-washed pre pre green background here. So let's get in with some nice purple random leaves. Okay. Mix a bit more purple. Which is the one I always have too much of? Can't remember now. There's some blue. There's some red. I always have too much blue, more red. And that's the that, that's the white that I've turned purple. Right, never mind. Let's just oh that's a lovely dark one. Okay. So this time instead of going for trying to make specific patterns, just using this little stamp to make some random ones. So this is dead easy. You're not even thinking. Seems to kind of, I keep trying to put it on its end and it comes out on its side. There we go. There's one on its end. We want one on its end, don't we, chaps? We don't want one on the side. We want some on the end. And let's have one up there. So you can see the opacity of these paints now. This is on a coloured background and this is coming up beautifully. No problemos. Okay, so let's put a few more in. Let's lighten that right up now. And we'll just get rid of the rest. You can see lovely paper for my sketchbooks there. We'll put some paler, paler on it. Won't be, <laughs> won't be a lot paler because I didn't clean the stamp. Let's clean the stamp. Let's not be so lazy. I'm not going to say chaps anymore. Did you notice I kept saying absolutely on her chunder? I did. Watched it back and I thought, oh no, because it's one of the things we were told in the seminar. Is don't keep saying the same word. Go and find a thesaurus and find other words. So I'm going to have to open my thesaurus and find lots of other words for absolutely, aren't I? Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. There's one. Exactly. Where else? Come on. Absolutely. Exactly. Without doubt. Without doubt. That would do. What else? You see, it's tricky, isn't it? Um, absolutely. Definitely. I've said definitely, haven't I? Definitely. Without doubt. You bet. Sure thing, babe. All those sorts of things. Whiffling. Whiffling. Right, so I'm putting on a nice paler purple one here, which looks very pretty. This is a nice stamp for overprinting randomly. Lightening it up. And a bit more. And I can do as much or as little as I like on here. This is just making me yet another variation of fabric to use. I do my collage and the more to my mind the more variations you have when you're doing a collage the easier it is to do it it's very hard if you're trying to do it with no variations at all and let's lighten that right up by just pouring plain old white out and putting that on now it will still lighten it'll still go purple because I've got purple all over the stamp but it will do a light, a very light purple now. 
which is what I want. I don't particularly want white on here, but light purple's nice. This is looking very, very pretty. Very pretty indeed. Now this one, because it's organic, it's quite easy to see how you would use it as a as a random print like that. It's not um it doesn't require masses of imagination. Let's put a couple of darker ones in. Very difficult to do now because the stand is dirty. But give it a bash. There we go. Okay, so we've now got another couple of pieces of fabric there. So let's put those to one side and let's get up purple background. Gorgeous that is. It's lush. In fact, I don't know which is the front and which is the back. That's the side I painted, but as you can see, the other side is also lovely. I might use that for the slightly broken down colour on the back then. Right, so what happens if I paint this? Let's go for random stamps again. Let's go for, we've done hearts. We haven't done double hearts. We haven't done leaves and we haven't done spots and we haven't done triple hearts. Oh, we haven't done the big rows. Um, what should we do? What should we do? Let's stop thinking. Let's stop thinking. Let's just get straight stuck in with some big roses. Okay. So here's the big rows. Let's. Well, we had. Let's let's start with this darker one. So plenty of red and a little blue. Remember that? Do you remember that? I remember that. Oh, too much blue. Mix it right on up there. And let's put this on and see what this looks like over the top of here. So I'm going to start off with sort of tone on tone. So I'm using the same colour, just a deeper version of it. So this is basically, if I do it like, if I kept it all purples, this would be a monochromatic screen. It doesn't have to be, it just means there's only one colour in it. That looks nice. That looks very nice. I like that a lot. I'm, um, this is drying up in here. It could be, I'm just not mixing enough of it. Maybe I'm being a bit mean. Okay, I could do this a lot more carefully. I could, I could put my paint on more carefully. And I'll tell you what would help is I'm actually using the littler brush here. Oh, that was a spectacularly bad print. Completely missed the middle out of my rose. But that's fine. That's a nicer one. That's good. Okay, so let's put a level, a level, a layer of these over just randomly. I'm not trying to make a particular pattern with these. And again, I'm going to make time to go off the edges. Also just makes your piece of material look nicer to be honest with you but it, it is useful when you actually want to use the edges but often when you're looking at something and thinking well that doesn't look as good as the flipping demonstrator or teacher did that might just be the difference is they have actually gone off the edges of theirs and made it look like a proper complete piece of material and i'm adding water um to this paint as well just to just just to bring it on and when I've finished all the paint left on this palette here, of which there is quite a bit, I will use to colour wash some more fabrics. So if I've got any fabric left from my um, pack, I would do that. And if not, I'd probably just try and find something else or I'd colour wash some sketchbook pages or some cartridge paper. Um, I wouldn't waste it. This is, I haven't said this on here, have I? I, have, I did say it on the programme. This is um, a lovely opaque fabric paint, heat fixed with the iron, very easy to use. Right, here we go. So let's go into a lighter colour now. So I'm just going to give the stamp a bit of a clean off. And let's lighten it up. Let's try and get a light purple. As you can see, I'm going to go in with white to begin with because I haven't cleaned the stamp very well. So it's actually giving still quite deep purple but not as dark as the other there we go so that's now putting another level on rather nice that quite tone on tone with the background that one but a different <laughs> different shade of purple but very much a mid-tone I'm, sure, I'm not sure i know what i'm talking about but it sounds good doesn't it anyway what i mean is it's all showing and we're getting a nice piece of cloth here i like it very much indeed I wish I could stop being so lazy and actually put the middles on the roses, but what I'll do is on these ones where I keep missing middles, is I'll just put a bit of a middle and just print a middle. Yay, that worked nicely. Amazing, amazing. I'm using a lot more white than anything else printing these. Um, I've now just about finished my first pot of white, but I've got another whole one to go. And this kit, the paints and the fabric I've got here, 
is the quantities I think that's in the large panels in the large one so but all the kits have enough paint to do you the materials in the kit you just need to don't chuck it all out all over the place right okay so we've got another layer now I could leave that like that which does look less what if what if what if we then popped in little baby rose in what tempting to do it in green isn't it yes too tempting to ignore so we'll put that wash in so it doesn't dry off we'll get this oops this one out oh flipping heck get some pick up some green i want a bit more white in that see if i can get some oh yes there's still some in the pot we're not out yet we're not out yet okay let's see how this goes nice colored green very kind of pale look at that boy i like that a lot okay let's keep going with that then i'm sort of looking for the gaps printing in them this is so pretty now we're making this for a specific purpose for the panels we're going to make this sort of fabric and printing so, sorry we're getting a bit of purple in this green as well because I've, as ever i've picked the dirty stamp um yeah this fabric could be used for all sorts of things home furnishings clothing um one of my make it personal i don't think it was a stamp i think it was a stencil she used but she made a beautiful uh, not dissimilar to this actually just a lot lot neater because it was rachel um rose fabric um and made a beautiful dress out of it so you could make curtains tablecloths cushions what else do people make for their homes? Uh, you, you can tell I haven't done any for a while, can't I? I used to. I used to do all sorts of lovely home things. Blinds. Just looked up and seen a blind. See if I can get any more clues around me. of thing, Things that you might serve yet. Napkins, I think, is the word we use now, isn't it? Um, I can do napkins. Let's put some really light ones on. So that you can see. And you can see that I'm working over purple here with green paint. And the green paint is staying green now it's because we've got a good opaque paint here and this is even with it thinned down um this I've, I've added an amount of water to these paints for you to make sure that they actually run when you're trying to paint the roses um so they could even be more opaque than this there we go okay so there's another piece of fabric let's go on to one of these nice how long have we got oh two minutes right so we'll go over this one and we might as well do it with something we haven't done let's do the little double heart okay and it happens to have green on there so we'll get some we'll get some nice green on there some green double hearts on this little fella it's a bit more of a limey green than i was expecting but again i'm going random i could be doing these as regular repeats if i wanted to i don't want to so i'm not let's um it's gone very limey let's put a bit of um let's let's live with limey let's go with limey shall we so we can do this so this is i'm putting the green on the purple the other way around this time i might put some limey ones on that bit there actually i think that could look quite nice that one with the very gentle greens on i just like looking it up and having different things and you don't have to use all one stamp on one piece of fabric either so that's some hearts but i also noticed somewhere the little heart so let's do a little heart and do some of these little split hearts and i need some more white let's just dollop in the let's just dollop straight in the pot for that and we can put some of these in they look nice and obviously i can change up the color that will make it interesting again. I could put negatives on if I wanted to. The choice is always yours. Just do what you feel like, what you like. Learn what you like to do. That sounds like Dick's to try to come in the door. The door's shut here to tell people I'm on air. I've learned that from a chanty. You ha I should have an I should have a lit sign saying I'm on air in here. Um, but Dick's to Dixter is trying to get in through the door. He doesn't like me being on air without him, but that's his own fault because he trolloped off to eat his dinner. Not my fault that my little studio assistant, the floor manager, wasn't in here. I'm having to manage all on my own, multitasking away. So it's quite pretty, just as it is, if I wanted a nice light one, or I think I've had it on time here 
So I am going to stop there. I will finish these off and you will see the rest of them when we do collaging tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye.